Hello everyone, I'm Kim Nalene and today is Tuesday, February 28th. You are now watching Open, a live program bringing the Bronx and New York City straight to you. Don't forget to stay connected with us via social media at BronxNet TV. Assembly member Kenny Burgos visited the show previously to introduce a new act aimed towards protecting New Yorkers struggling with heat. The Safe Heaters Act was recently passed by Governor Kathy Hochul, and the Assembly member joins me now to discuss what this means for New Yorkers. Assembly member Burgos, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Now, last time, as I mentioned, you were here, you announced the Safe Space Heaters Act. Can you just remind viewers what the act is about? Sure. Well, last year we saw here in New York City and here in the Bronx specifically, uh, one of the worst residential fires that New York City has ever seen, where 17 of our neighbors lost their lives in the Twin Parks fire. Um, and it's largely known now that this fire was caused by a faulty space heater. Um, so that kind of prompted us in the legislature to make sure that we prevent a tragedy like this from ever happening again by introducing the Safe Space Heaters Act. Now, I really want to know, you know, as a leader in the Bronx, how did this you know, fire, unfortunately, impact the borough. Um, and as I mentioned, it's been a year, you know, have you, how are we still seeing the effects of that? Sure. I, I would even argue and say it impacted the world. You know, we had a, a global response to this fire. Um, you know, it's a tragic day when people lose their lives. But at that scale and, and you know, we had children losing their lives. Um, it was a huge impact here in the Bronx. I think, you know, many people still remember it. We renamed the street um, after one of the community leaders there recently. Uh, but I think a lot more Bronx sites are, are, are aware and vigilant um, in just preventing, you know, these very preventable fires from happening in their homes. And would you say like now it's been some time? Are we, do you think we're still kind of dealing with the effects of that? I think so. I mean, it's, it's, I think mourning uh, can take some time, uh, but I think as a Bronx community, it, it's hard to kind of move past that just so quickly. Um, I think it's going to go down, you know, as one of the larger historical events, at least in our generation. Uh, but like I say, you know, hopefully we, we would never have to see something like that ever happen again. Now, as I mentioned, Governor Kathy Hochul supported the act and signed legislation that will require electric space heaters to have new safety measures. Can you just explain what are those new features? Sure. So, you know, safe um, space heaters are, are sold pretty much throughout the city of New York. Um, you can get them from a Home Depot, maybe it's even your, your local convenience store. Uh, and the problem that we were seeing was a lot of these space heaters were really the initial cause of many fires throughout the city of New York and largely because they had very few um, safety requirements on them. So we put in a, a bill to require that these, that these space heaters being sold going forward would have a thermostat, an automatic shutoff, and even more importantly, that they're regulated by OSHA, which is a federal agency, um, you know, working on safety standards. Uh, so we're hopeful with these new provisions that we can really prevent any further fires from happening with space heaters. And I want to talk a little bit. I know these are like some really cool, um, not cool, but, you know, just life saving, you know, sure. measures. Who is responsible for ensuring this change happens? I'm curious to know, uh, is this on the retailers who are selling it or is it on you no know, manufacturers? Sure. Well, like any law, retailers are, you know, uh, required to follow the law. Um, but on top of that, we make sure that our state and our city agencies like Department of Consumer Affairs are working in conjunction with these retailers, are working in conjunction with OSHA to make sure that, you know, every every um, safe. Uh, Fire uh, space heater is sold in New York uh, is following the code that we put forth. Now, I'm curious to know, this is, I guess, for me, the first time that I'm seeing, you know, we see something happen and this is like one of the solutions to that. You know, is it a challenge to kind of get more people, uh, a lot of people to change things in in regards to this, was this a challenge to get this, you know, to come to light? Sure. Um, I don't think there was a lot of pushback. And again, really because of the nature of, of what sparked this legislation, um, you're, you're obviously going to have some retailers, manufacturers that, you know, may not want to see these new provisions because they've already produced, you know, X amount of space heaters, you know, that maybe don't follow the guidelines here. Uh, to be quite honest, though, but we can't put safety above you know, below anything. So safety is going to come first. So it's, it, you know, it's unfortunate if some of these manufacturers may have to kind of go back to the assembly line and, and remanufacture these products, but we're going to put the safety of New Yorkers first. Now, oftentimes when new appliances have more features, they tend to cost a little bit more. Um, have there any, have there been any thoughts on just affordability, uh, especially since, you know, this happened in the Bronx? Unfortunately, a lot of people in the Bronx do tend to live in low income areas. Is this something that anybody has thought about just in regards to how much these cost? Yeah, it absolutely was a thought when we crafted this bill. Uh, but what we found was that a large portion <clears throat> of, of space heaters sold right now, even prior to the law, were already following somewhat of these guidelines. It really was the space heaters at the lower end of the market that weren't. 
And I'm completely, you know, cognizant of the fact that, you know, people don't have a lot of disposable income to spend money on these things. But again, we just can't take the risk uh, that, you know, you're buying part of the lower end market of a space heater and that's going to cause a fire in your home because that's going to have a lot more cost than what the cost of that space heater was. Uh, we don't anticipate a large increase in cost because, again, we've seen some on the market that have these provisions that you know, are, are within what we believe to be an affordable range. Uh, but again, making sure that all of them are following these guidelines, that things are the utmost important. And that's really what the main focus was. That's really interesting. I actually didn't know that, you know, some of these space heaters already had these features. So I guess it, it makes it a little bit even more disheartening to know that it was, you know, people looking for a more affordable option. Yeah. So, you know, I'm really glad that you mentioned that this was just one solution, you know, to the issues that we're seeing in regards to heat hot water and just all this stuff during the winter sure. months. Can you speak to how heat and hot water, you know, just are an issue for so many New Yorkers? Um, and this is something that we face yearly. Yeah, no, it, it's a huge issue and it really shouldn't be. Uh, and here in the Bronx, unfortunately, like many statistics, we, we bear the brunt of it, right? Uh, it was reported that the Bronx has the highest cases of, of hot water outages and heat outages. Uh, in my borough, I represent over a dozen NYCHAs. Um, and I regularly call NYCHA the worst landlord in the city of New York. Uh, and it's not uncommon for me to receive a call almost weekly about a heat and hot water outage. Um, and again, it goes beyond NYCHA. You know, we have a lot of unscrupulous landlords that are also, you know, having these conditions in their, in their apartments and in their buildings. Um, so my office, along with a lot of government agencies, you know, we work very hard to try to rectify these scenarios, but unfortunately it happens all too often. And I'm glad you brought NYCHA because most of the time people often just think you know, apartments and they just think regular landlords, but there yeah. are people who, so many people, you know, who rely on NYCHA. What are some ways that people can just hold these, you know, these leaders in these areas accountable? Sure. I mean, well, NYCHA has their own, um, you know, their own system of reporting hot uh, heat and hot water outages, uh, but the accountability comes with us, right? I talk to my residents regularly. They have my cell phone number, my email, uh, and, I, and I call the top people in charge in NYCHA for sometimes even a one apartment outage because it, there's not a single New Yorker that should be going without heat or hot water, especially when we have some frigid temperatures. But at the very least, they're paying their rent, they're paying their bills, and, at, and what NYCHA and other landlords owe to those tenants is heat and hot water. Now, what are some ways we can ensure that leaders like yourself, you're obviously here, you're talking about it, so we know that you know, and obviously that you care. You know, what are some ways that we can make sure other leaders in the Bronx are aware of this and, you know, how we can just just amplify this concern. Sure. It, it comes down to an education campaign. Um, you know, I think, you know, you have a lot of elected officials that are aware of these issues because it's brought to our attention every day. Uh, but, you know, we're not the only leaders in this borough. We have a lot, a lot of amazing advocates. We have a lot of tenant leaders uh, who fight every day on behalf of their neighbors, you know, and it's a thankless and unpaid job. Um, but we try to educate them and, and give them the resources and help to navigate the sometimes very complex nature of bureaucracy here in New York City and New York State. Um, and I think empowering them helps to empower us and empowers us, all of us as a borough, uh, to really, you know, break the mold and, and, and break, you know, the, the unfortunate kind of like myths of the Bronx um, to make us a much better borough. And I want to expand outside of the Bronx because, as I mentioned, this is like a New York City thing. This is just sure. all over the city. So how can people even get, let's say, the mayor uh, to kind of yeah. hear these concerns? Well, we live in a great age of social media, right? I mean, I don't think you've ever been so easily connected uh, to our leaders in charge. Uh, I can tell you the mayor, you know, he, he's probably going to see that tweet if you if you and your neighbors uh, and other advocates are pushing on him saying, you know, this is an issue that we're experiencing. But on top of that, use people like me, uh, use other avenues. You know, the mayor has a huge staff. Uh, the governor has a huge staff. Um, you can call their offices. And, you know, I know so many times people believe that these you know, these issues and these complaints fall on deaf ears, but they don't. There's power in numbers. Uh, and too often people feel cynical about the process and don't engage at all. And unfortunately, it's like, you know almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy where we're not making our leaders aware of the issues and therefore the changes don't happen. Right. Uh, so it's about constantly advocating, not only for yourself, but for your community, for your neighbors and pushing on our leaders. That's really interesting. And, and I do see that a lot in the Bronx, sadly, that you know people think no one's listening. Yeah. So they don't bother like exactly. yelling, but you made a really great point at that, so thank you. Now, what can tenants do if they feel that their needs for heat and hot water are being neglected? Sure. Uh, when it comes to NYCHA, I think many NYCHA tenants uh, know the hotline to call. Uh, but even if you're just a regular renter here in New York City, uh, you can call your elected official to help navigate that. But HPD also has a, a heat team and a heat department that can take these reports. And if the landlords are found in violation of, of New York City's heat laws, uh, these landlords can be fined. And we know nothing incentivizes landlords in a big in a big old fine. Um, so using you know the city agencies, your elected officials, uh, 301 hotline, use all these avenues and you're going to you know get the work you want to see done.
Now, when can people expect, you know, just the St. Peter's Act to come into effect? When can they see this, uh, like, in stores and stuff like that? Sure. So we introduced the bill um, almost immediately after the fire took place last year. Um, it was signed by the governor at the end of last year in December and takes effect 120 days from the bill signing. Uh, so we're expecting that the law be in effect by April, and you should see those space heaters on the market shortly after. Now, will tenants be required to get rid of maybe their older heaters? You know, how is that going to be regulated just to ensure the safety of uh, everybody who lives in the building? Sure. You, you know, it, it was a discussion that we had, um, but our idea was not to, you know, put the onus on tenants. We didn't want to install a sort of fine or any sort of penalties for having these space heaters because the idea is not to put the brunt on New Yorkers. Um, so there's no provision in the law that requires them to get rid of the space heaters. We highly encourage it if you don't have a space heater that you know, that has these new requirements for your safety and for your family's safety. Uh, but it, this law um, captures safe heaters, um, space heaters going forward. Uh, I think that's really interesting because you never want to make pe people feel like you have to do something. Yeah. Um, do you think at this time or maybe in the future there will be like maybe just ways to get people to kind of be encouraged to kind of make that switch? Sure. I mean, I think just naturally through the course of time, people will phase out those old space heaters and then mm -hmm. we'll get to a moment where the only space heaters sold in New York are the ones following this new law. And again, hopefully keeping families and New Yorkers much safer than they were in the past. Well, Assembly Member Burgos, thank you so much for joining thank me. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. To keep up with all of Assembly Member Burgos' efforts, please follow him on Twitter at Kenny Burgos and why, or go to his website, which you can see below on the screen. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more open right after this.